Hello, this is P4, and as you can see, this is not Pokemon Emerald. I'm going to decide to do something different today. You see, I mentioned before that I play competitive Pokemon, and I decided to upload a competitive Pokemon video. But this isn't any competitive Pokemon video. This is a cap video. Um, a cap battle. And recently, Smogon released a new cap Pokemon for pre-testing. Playtesting, cap stands for create a Pokemon. And it's Malaconda. And I actually like this thing, so I decided to give it a try. I normally don't get involved in cat projects, but this guy looks so cool, I had to give it a try. There's a picture of him there. Here's his sprite art. And there's his animated art. Now, as you can see here, the purpose is a Pokemon that whose presence in the metagame increases the usage of one or more underused types and, sim and simultaneously decreases the usage of one or more types. And to do that, they decided to do... To accomplish this, they decided to make Sun more prevalent and Rain less powerful. And so that would decrease the usage of Psychic and Water types, along with Ghost and Electric, I think they were going for, and increase the usage of Grass and Fire types, because that's those, was, those are what benefit most from Sun. So let's take a look at this thing. As you can see, it has the, it's a Dark Grass type, which is interesting typing. It has the ability Harvest, which in Sun, it lets you reuse your berry multiple times. So my specific Malakinda has a citrus berry, so I can heal myself multiple times with the battle. As you can see, we can look at its stats. It has quite a bit of HP, pretty decent attack, not so great defenses, terrible special attack, but that's alright because it has decent enough physical attack. Really high special defense, which is really important, and it's unfortunately though it's pretty slow. If we look at some of its moves, some important ones include Rapid Spin, it can learn Pursuit, which is great for trapping Latias, which is a huge problem with Sun Teams. It also gets Sucker Punch, it gets Leaf Blade, Crunch, uh, Power Whip, and Punishment. Those are all good moves. TMs, well, you can kind of guess what TMs there are. There's too many to go through. I'll point out some important ones, though, like Taunt. It can use Taunt, it can use U-Turn, Dragon Tail, all good moves. And then it pretty much learns what you expect. Heal Bell's a little odd, but it kind of makes sense if you look at its apple-like tail. It kind of looks like a bell, so I actually think that makes sense. Other people disagree with me. Synthesis heals it. C-bomb, another damaging move. Um, aromatherapy is the same thing as heal bells. If you complain about heal bell, give it aromatherapy instead. There you go. Glare. I actually gave mine glare. Glare is a really cool move. It paralyzes foes regardless of their type. Like, Thunder Wave isn't as good as glare because Thunder Wave cannot paralyze ground types, so glare can. And also gets Stun Sport too, but I gave my Glare for no real particular reason. And that is Malaconda. And I'm actually going to be using it in, I'm going to show a video soon of me using Malaconda in battle. So, we'll get right to that. Alright, I'm back. And as you can see, I have a showdown battle here. And I'm the team on the right with the Malaconda on it. That my opponent is not using the Malaconda. And I have a Sun Team here, Nine Tails of Drought, Choice Bandit, Infernape, um, Stealth Rock, then Three Attacker, Dawn Fan, Life Orb, Alakazam, and Standard Sun Sweeping, Venusaur. And my opponent, he has a lot of things Malakonda could get to work on, so I know Malakonda will be very important in this battle. Malakonda is good for Latias and Jellicent, so... I have to keep Malakinda safe for those two. And this battle was very close. I actually, this is one of the closest battles I had in a while, so this should be fun. So let's get right into the battle. Alright, so he leads with his Heatran, and I lead with my Dawn Fan. And I decide just to go right for Stealth Rocks. And he's going to switch out to his Kieran Black, seeing this is an opportunity to set up in my face. Well, he is wrong. He uses Substitute. I decided to make a pretty risky move. Stay in and go for the Earthquake. I figured I can take at least one Ice move because I have the Sturdy on my Dalton Fan. And then I can counterattack and do a lot of damage. He predicts my Earthquake, goes to Latias, and I kind of make a bad move here, and I regret this throughout the rest of the battle. I stay in because I didn't want to risk him setting up Calm Minds or a Substitute, and I go right for the Ice Shard. And he tricks a Choice Scarf on me, and he steals my Leftovers. So this kind of cripples my Dawn fan. It's not worthless, but it's not as good. He sends in his fortress, and I didn't predict the switch. I expected him to stay in, and I went into Billy to try to counter his Latias. I used Glare for I, no real reason. I didn't think fortress can really hurt me, so I just said to stay in. He rapid spins my rocks away, and I crunch. I probably should have glared again, predicting a switch or something, but I didn't. 
So now this Kieran Black's back in, and I really didn't want to stay in, so I go back to Donphan. Because it's probably the least valuable member of my team, and I know it can break subs. So I'm going to stay in just to break his subs. It roosts up. I really don't care. I'm going to break his sub. I just want to make sure he does not have a sub. That's all I'm trying to do. And he decides it's not worth staying in because he can't get a sub, but he wants to save it for later. So he goes back to Latias. I predict that. Go into Billy again. For some reason, my... Malakai is the only one with a nickname, and so we want a Billy. He goes for Draco Meteor, and look how little that does. A Draco Meteor from a Latias does only 38%, and I do exactly what I want. I paralyze his Latias. So, he's in some trouble now. He goes back to his fortress, and I glare again, predicting the switch, but unfortunately, it's not what I want him to go to. And I make a bad mistake. I stay in on this fortress. I crunch it. It gets paralyzed. I got the defense drop, which I was hoping for, so I'm going to keep crunching, hoping to get more defense drops. But it goes for Gyro Ball, and that does way too much damage. So, as you can see, that's why I like Harvest. Yeah, I got most of my health back, and I do not want to get by, hit by another Gyro Ball, so I switch into Ninetales to get my son up. And he gets paralyzed again. I don't want to go for the Fire Blast, because I know he has the Heatran. I think I risk it anyways, don't I? Yeah, I risk it anyways. And, because that's the only offensive move my Ninetales has. And, so, I hit him with the Fire Blast, I switch back into Billy, he goes for Draco Meteor again, it does nothing, and I heal, I heal most of the damage he does to me back. That's why I, I love this thing. This was a neat new Pokemon, I thought. So, I think I go for Crunch again. Yeah. And this Fortress is really becoming a pain. I think I switch out here, because I don't want to hit by another guy, well, yeah, I go right into Dawnfan. So I can start Earthquaking, I think. Oh no, I think I... Do I go for rocks or earthquake? I think I just go right... I go for rocks. Which is, if it wasn't Choice Scarf, I could have followed up with an earthquake or something, but unfortunately I am. So I have to go to Billy, who yet yeah, is being helpful again against this Jealous, and he thought he can set up on Billy. Well, you don't set up on Billy. Billy will destroy your soul with a crunch. He burns Billy, but... He, oh, he tries to burn Billy, but he misses, which is kind of unfortunate. That probably would have changed the battle if he hit, but... No, I switch out. I think I predict him to switch. So I switch to Alec. Or no, no. I predict him to use the Will-O-Wisp. And I go into my Alakazam. So now he's in some trouble. He goes into Latias. I use the Encore, trying to trap Jellison into Will-O-Wisp. And I want to save... No, no, I just go right for the Shadow Ball and kill his Latias. So I think that was a good plan. My part switching to Alakazam to absorb the Will-O-Wisp and try to Encore him into it. But now he goes into Fortress. I I didn't want to hit by a Gyro Ball, so I switch into Venusaur. He rapid spins away my um, Stealth Rocks, and I think I just I just go for a Giga Drain, which I predicted the Heat Train to come in, but there wasn't much I could do about it. Sludge Bomb or Earthquake wouldn't have affected it. I just wanted to break Heat Train's balloon. So now I think I may switch into Donphan. Oh no, I think I just stay in and go for the Earthquake. I decide to sack my Venusaur. Looking at his team, I didn't think Venusaur would be that useful. So then I go into Alakazam, because I definitely outspeed it and kill the Heatran. So that's a big threat to my team. Gone. He goes into Breloom. I'm not quite sure why. I mean, yeah, I, break, I don't kill him in one hit, and his Bullet Seed does kill my Alakazam. But really, Alakazam isn't that useful now that I got his Breloom down to his Sash, because now Infernape can outspeed and destroy this thing with a U-turn. And I think I go out to Donphan. Oh no, I got to Ninetales. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I go out to Ninetales. And then I think he sends out his Kyurem. Yeah, he sends out Kyurem. And he goes for the Substitute. And I decide just to try to break it. Oh no, I make a bad play. A bad, bad play and go for the Will-O-Wisp. I thought I would outspeed it. I don't know why I thought that, but I made the bad play of going for the Willis. He goes for the Dragon Claw, does a lot of damage to me, and unfortunately I missed the Fire Blast, which actually mattered more than... If I broke his sub, I could have killed him with Infernape, so it actually mattered a bit. And he Dragon Tails me to death. He go, I go into my Dawn Fan, just because Dawn, Dawn Fan seems to be helping against this thing, so I thought I might as well continue the trend. I go for the Earthquake, does 46% to this Jellison, which is pretty decent, but I don't want to take a Water Attack, so I go into Malakanda again, who's been putting in work this battle, really. It hasn't really gotten any kills, but it has helped out a lot. 
It finally burns him. Jellicent finally burns my Kamakonda. I glare it, so now it's paralyzed, so it can't outspeed me anymore. I heal back up with my citrus berry, and I start going for crunches. Trying to get the defense lowering. It goes for a substitute. I kind of have to go for power whips now, because crunch is too weak to break a sub. As you see on the right side of the screen, I only do 23.8%. So I have to use power whips to break the sub. And it's going to start recovering. And I'm in a bit of trouble here. I'm going to keep going for the power whip. Or no, I think I go for crunch here to get this, but um, try to get the defense drop. And I know I still keep going for power whip for some reason. And he goes into fortress. I did absolutely nothing to fortress. Yeah, I'm just going to go for rapid spin to clear up the rocks. I really don't want rocks on my side of the field. He goes for the gear ball. And I still have Billy at... Billy is getting low on health, but the citrus berry is keeping me up there. So if this fortress won't really be easy, easily able to kill me, I switch into Dawn Fan. He sets up toxic spikes. I don't really care too much. I mean, it's a problem, but not all that big a problem. He goes for rapid spin. I think he predicted the stealth rocks. He gets the Gestapo Berry, and he gets paralyzed, which was unfortunate, but I don't think it mattered all that much. I go for Earthquake, kill Fortress, and now all he has left is Jellicent and Kiram. I let him, or no, I don't let him. I switch into Billy, who doesn't get poisoned from, or burned. Yeah, okay, I remember now, I predicted the will of this, so I went into Billy. So then, now I can continue what I've been trying to do this whole battle. Get the defense drop with crunch. Unfortunately, it does not happen. He does get paralyzed now, though, so I can keep trying to get the defense drop with crunch. And I think that's what I do. I'm pretty sure that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. I definitely keep going for crunch. And he's going to start setting up subs, I think, so I think I switch into my Dawn fan like I've been doing the entire battle. And... I'm going to keep going for Earthquakes. He goes for Sub. Like, I probably would have gone for Sub, too. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even sure this Kyrim has an Ice move. He never really reveals that during the battle. He goes for Dragon Plot. That does quite a bit, but Dawn Fan's bulky, so he takes it. Earthquake takes out the Sub. And then he's going to kill my Dawn Fan off next turn with another dra um, Dragon Claw. I'm going to force him to... Okay, now. This is a very important move I make right here. This is game-changing. I would have lost if I didn't do this, I think. I send out my Infernape. I predict the Jelly... If, he, if I predicted wrong, if I went for close combat, I would have lost this battle. But I predict the switch into Jelly Scent, go for the Thunder Punch, which leaves his Jelly Scent at really low HP. Then I go for another Thunder Punch to finish off the Jelly Scent. And he's forced to go into his Kiram. Now... My Infernape, as you can see, is at very low health. If I stay in one more turn, Poison will kill me. So, I know, since I'm Choice Bandit, I'm locked into I Thunder Punch, so I have to go into my Malaconda to switch up moves to um, close combat so I can kill this Kieran Black. Kill this Kieran Black, sorry. He's going to go for Roost. I am going to go for the Crunch, I think. Oh, I can speed up the battle now. I go for Crunch, because that's really the only move that makes sense. And unfortunately, I am not able to break the sub. I actually thought I lost at this point. So I crunch. I don't break the sub. He goes for a Dragon Claw. Doesn't... And... I heal up. I crunch. Don't quite break the sub. And what's he... I'm... Get my stitches... Yeah, I stitches back up. He goes for another Dragon Claw. I don't quite die. I go for the crunch. I break the sub. If I did not break the sub there, I would have lost this battle. This guy was... So, I die from the burn. I send out my Infernape, and I'm able to barely, barely, barely snatch the victory up with a close combat to Kieran Black's face. So, I thought that was a very good battle. Very interesting. As you can see in the comments, I said that was close. And it was a very interesting close game. If any of us made any plays that were slightly different, the battle could have gone a variety of different directions, and it was good fun. I enjoyed the battle a lot. I was It was pretty intense while I was playing. So, this is really one of the few cat play tests I've ever participated in, and I may start participating in them more now, because this was a quite a fun battle. Malakanda is pretty awesome, and I think he could accomplish his job. I haven't played with him enough yet to say for sure, but 
I have good vibes about him. I think Malakon is an interesting Pokemon. He helped a lot during that battle. Latias would have been a lot bigger a threat. So would Jellicent. Without Malakonda, both of them would be able to do more work on our team. So, thank you for watching. I will I'm not done with my Emerald Let's Play. I'm just uploading something different for a change of pace. So, see you. I probably am Pokemon Emerald.